In this lesson, we're going to be talking about population growth. And questions that are involving population growth are generally going to be given to you where they're going to be asking for a population of an area after a certain amount of time has passed given a specific population growth rate and a starting population or different variations of that. And when you're dealing with population growth problems, you are going to be using the compound interest formula. So this is exactly what we've been looking at in the last few videos. We've done a number of videos on compound interest and simple interest. And this is going to be one of the last applications of the compound interest formula that we're going to be discussing. So whenever you see population growth, you know that you're going to be using the compound interest formula to solve those problems in grade 10. So let's just dive into a few examples. If the population of KwaZulu-Natal is 11,531,628 and the population growth rate in South Africa is 2% annually, what will be the population of KwaZulu-Natal, I'm going to abbreviate that as KZN, in three years? And I'm really sorry about the noise in the background. There's some construction happening nearby. Uh, so hopefully that is not too annoying. So basically in this question, this is one of the more straightforward ways that you can be asked about population growth. You are given a current population and in this case, that's 11,531,628. And you're told that the growth rate, the population growth rate is 2% annually in South Africa. And now you're asked to determine what the population will be in KwaZulu-Natal in three years. So we're going to be applying the compound interest formula to this. And let's just write down that compound interest formula right here. A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the power of N. A, in this case, is going to represent the population three years after. So this is what we are looking for in this question. P, which usually is your principal amount when you're just dealing with straight compound interest problems. And in this case, it is going to be the starting population. So that will be 11,531,628. Our I, in this case, is going to be our population growth rate. That is going to be 2%, and we have to express it as a decimal, so that is 0 0.02. Our N is the number of years, and in this case, it's 3 years. So our N is equal to 3. And we can plug these values back into this formula. We're going to get A is equal to... 11,531,628 times 1 plus 0 0.02 to the power of 3. And you can plug this into your calculator. And that should give you an answer of 12,237,455.89. But remember, when we're dealing with population problems, we can't have 0.89 of a person. So we have to round these up to the nearest whole number. So that means that this is going to become 12,237,456. So that is going to be the population of KwaZulu-Natal in three years if the population growth rate was 2% annually and this was your starting population. Let's go ahead and do another example. An isolated colony of bees had a population of 30,000 in 2015, which grew to 42,000 in 2017. What was the annual population growth rate? So in this question, we are asked to figure out the population growth rate if we are told an initial and final population and a period of time in which that went from 30,000 to 42,000. 
So we're still going to use the compound interest formula. We're just going to be solving for a different variable in that formula. So in this case, if this is our compound interest formula, we are going to have a value for A. Our A is going to be the final population at the end of our period of time, which was 42,000. Our P is the initial population, and that was 30,000. Our I is the population growth rate. That is what we are trying to solve for in this question. And our N, the number of years, is going to be two years because two years have elapsed from 2015 to 2017. So that's two. And now we can plug this into our equation and we are going to get that 42,000 is equal to 30,000 times one plus I to the power of two. So what we can do to make this a little bit easier is divide both sides of the equation by 30,000. So we're getting rid of the 30,000 from this side of the equation. So that will become 42,000 divided by 30,000 is equal to one plus I squared. And if we want to try and solve for the variable here, another thing that we can do to make this a little less complicated to try and get rid of this squared over here. So we can take the square root of both sides and then we're gonna get rid of this little squared over here. So if we take the square root of 42,000 divided by 30,000 and then take the square root of one plus I squared, we are going to be left with 1.18 three, two, which is equal to one plus I. 1.1832 is what we get if we put this into our calculator, the square root of 42,000 divided by 30,000. And if we take the square root of this, it just cancels out this squared right here. And now we can easily solve for our variable on this side. So all we have to do now is subtract one from both sides and then we're gonna have isolated our i. So 1.1832 minus one is equal to i. So i is equal to 0.1832. That is our population growth rate as a decimal. If we wanted to express it as a percentage, we just multiply this by 100. So 18.32% is our population growth rate, our annual population growth rate. Let's go over one last example. If the population of South Africa is 59,620,000 now, and the annual population growth rate is consistently 1.2%, what was the population of South Africa two years ago? So in this question, we are given the current population. And we are asked to determine what the population was two years ago if our annual population growth rate was consistently 1.2% for that period of two years. So in this case, we are given our A. Our A, well, let me just write down our compound interest formula first, and then our A is equal to 59,620,000. That is the current population. And our P is the initial population two years ago. That is what we are trying to determine. I is 1.2% or as a decimal 0 0.012. And N is two because it is a period of two years that we are applying this to. So now we can plug this into our equation and solve for our variable. So 59,620,000 ,000 is equal to P times one plus 0 0.012 to the power of two. 
And to solve for p, we need to divide both sides by 1 plus 0 0.012 to the power of 2. So 59,620,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.012 squared is going to be equal to p. And if we put this into our calculator, we are going to get that p is equal to 58,214,469.8. But remember, when we're dealing with population, we can't have 0.8 of a person, so we have to round off to our nearest whole number, which means that the population of South Africa two years ago was 58,214,000. 470 and that is our final answer so by now you should have a really good idea of how to apply the compound interest formula to a variety of questions we've dealt with inflation and population growth which are two applications of our compound interest formula and we also dealt with higher purchase agreements which was an application of our simple interest formula so if you come across questions in your finance and growth section of your grade 10 curriculum, that should pretty much cover any type of question that you get that is going to be involving compound interest or simple interest. So that is going to be the last video that we use compound interest and we can move on to the next section of your finance and growth topic in the next video.